Hey YouTube, it's Anthony with you on this channel. This go around, we're going to get rid of the wiring or some of the wiring from the green plug, the brown plug, and the black plug. So we've got a drawing that we're going to use again. It's in the uh, descriptions. Also, make sure you have a pad of paper, a pencil, or masking tape, Sharpie, some cutters, and a other uh, small um, hand tools and we'll be right back ready to go back on our brown connector we're gonna be looking at the gray with red this goes back to pin 46 but it makes several junctions throughout our harness this is the grounding side or um, for several of the sensors. So with how the computer does it, you, you got a, a ground and it relays that ground back to the computer through essentially a resistor. So water temperature, for instance, it's not an on or an off type of signal. It's a variable signal. So what the sensor does essentially is it slowly gives you more or less ground depending on what the temperature is so we're going to go ahead and just cut that out we'll take it out through a splice later but for now um i'm not even gonna i might i'm just gonna put 46 on it to let me know what that is later but we'll be removing that from uh where it splices Okay, next on there is red with blue. This this connector goes to uh, the dash area for the start, the tack, the water temperature, oil pressure. Um, so this red with blue is going to be our start when the key is in the on position, and then the start position that's gonna be, it's gonna energize this wire. So we need to keep this, but pull that back through and put start, hot in start, would it be a good way to uh, label that. So again, it's red with blue, and it goes to the distributor, the TFI, to tell the distributor and the ignition system it's in start. So I'm gonna cut that out, and I'm gonna, Get that back to the 60 pin here because uh, we want that inside the car. So, I mean, it actually, oops, wrong side of it. It actually goes from there straight to the TFI. So, we may have to, yeah, it's, it's not going to be long enough to make it. Uh, we're going to put hot and start on it and we will splice that and take it to our starter. This is one of the necessities that we'll have to have to have to make a run. So hot in start. <clears throat> Next is gonna be a red with a green on it. This also goes to your distributor. This is, excuse me, this is hot in run or start. And this is one of the, this is the hot off of the ignition relay. So I'm just going to cut that, pull this back again. And you can see that it actually goes to a junction right here. So we're, I'm just going to cut that right here. We're going to clean these junctions up. We already know that this is what it is and it'll be right in here too. As a matter of fact, it's on our EEC relay. Here's our EEC relay and it's our red with green. That tells, this is where we're gonna pick it up at uh, for the relays. Okay. 
So still working with our brown. We have three more. There's a tan with a yellow, and this goes to the coil and to the distributor and to your tachometer. So if you plan on running a tachometer, go ahead and cut this and label it the tach. You can see how it's right here. It is junctioned, and this is a resistor that's required. It is, a, it's even labeled on here. It is a 22,000 ohm quarter watt or half watt, excuse me, half watt resistor. Um, I'm not sure if you can see on there, but if you don't have that, you need to add that. So I am going to, I'm just going to label this to tack. And if I need to, I'll run a wire from here back. Remember, labeling, even if it's the min most minute thing, is going to give us a lot of information later on when we go and look at these more. Okay, last two, white with red. This is to the oil pressure sensor that's on the engine. It runs up into the white salt shaker connector. Also, the red with white goes up there too, and that is the water temp sensor this is for the gauges not for the what the computer needs so we'll start with our white and red cut that off and we'll pull that back at least up to here so again there is our white and red we're going to pull that out and i'm going to label that because it may make it into here it may not but if you choose to run mechanical gauges Go ahead and take this out. You don't need this. Um, if you choose to run electrical gauges, it's important to leave this wire in. Even if you don't use the factory gauge or the factory sending unit, this will be very helpful to us. So we're gonna do white with red is oil pressure. So I'm gonna write oil pressure gauge on it. And then we're going to lay that in with the harness along with our, our start circuit wire. And then our red and white, same deal. I'm going to cut that out. And we're going to pull that up and around and mark that water temp gauge. Now that has gotten rid of the green plug, the black plug, and the brown plug. So next we've got this gray plug that we'll take out. All right guys, we're gonna work on the gray plug today. Let's try to get that front and center. All right, so in the gray plug. All these just go through except for uh, this blue 
in orange. It ties in with the test plug. So we're going to just label this. Let me uh, grab the test plug over here and I'll show it, show you so you can see what I mean. So here's our, our test plug and there's our blue and our orange. I'm gonna cut that, leave that into this part of the harness. Um, but first, let's go over some of the other stuff. So we have two little white ones that I was showing you earlier. This one is was with the uh, mass air meter and it, it just passes through. So there's nothing that we need on this one. I'm gonna go ahead, cut them. Can't use the plug. I've already traced these around. So this is, looks like a, like a purplish color with a green stripe. And here's our purplish color with a green stripe. And the other one is a pink, but I can't tell uh, what it is. Maybe it's got a little red stripe in it, um, but nonetheless, so if you watch our wires here, you'll see there's that one. And then there's that one. So I'm going to go ahead and pull those out. I'm not even going to cut them off that, uh, plug I'm just gonna leave that on there and then we'll pull this out sorry I'm and we'll pull this out other two I'll show another little white connector that has uh, similar colors again they pass through I don't I'm not sure what they're for um, we don't need them so we're gonna cut them and we're going to pull them through So that leaves a red, which when you start to tug on it, goes right here to this big terminals of red, which is 37 and 57. So we're gonna cut that out. And then our blue and orange I'm gonna cut this and mark this um, test. That way I can go back through here and look. There's a, uh, it doubles up here so on the test plug. So one of those probably can be taken off. Um, but before I do that, I'm just gonna leave that. I'm gonna leave that in the harness here and just label it test. So right there is five wires that we've taken out of the harness. Along with the other ones, we've removed about 12 or 13 wires from the harness. Uh, it's much smaller. You can see, look how big my bundle was when I started and how many wires I've pulled out of it now. So let me label this test. And 
that completes that. The last little bit of tidying in that we're going to do is we're going to get rid of three individual ground wires and we're going to replace it with just one wire. That's the last thing that really needs to be done before we can tidy tidy everything up. So if we look right here, right next to the 60 pin, you've got one ground. It's uh, black with a white and it's tied in with three that run into the rest of the harness. The other end, and this is an actual another piece, you can see all three tie into one individual ground. So we're gonna get rid of those three individual grounds and run one, but as, here's what I'm talking about right here. You can see there's one, two, three, four that run through here. We can take and make one connection here with one and bring that in and tie it with this. So first things we're gonna do is, we're gonna go ahead and just, I'm gonna cut these three individual ones, all right? The heaviest one, I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna resolder this one to this heavy one and we're gonna use that heavy one up here to tie it in. When a lot of people uh, with the electric side on a car spend a lot of time sizing and, and designing the power or the, the positive side of a circuit and the grounding or the negative side of a circuit is super important because you have to complete a circuit, you have power in, power out. If you don't have enough wire capacity to do either one, you're gonna have problems. You're gonna have problems uh, with a pump not running efficiently. You can have a problem with a fan not running efficiently. In our case, we wanna make sure that these components in our EFI can run efficiently. So, we are going to replace, this looks to be about a 14, the large one, and two 16s. Maybe one is an 18 gauge. I'm going to run a 10 into this right here. I'm going to keep this 14 and this one. We're just going to resolder these. But when I come into th this section, I'm going to bring a 10 from essentially the battery all the way to this point. That's going to give us a lot more uh, wiring capacity for the ground and uh, give us a much cleaner grounding path, uh, less resistance on the grounding path, and essentially we can get rid of, look how many wires, four wires with one. It's gonna clean it up a little bit. It won't make it so hard to w wonder, well, why, where's it, well, why, where's this easy? Let's just get done with it and we'll replace it with one wire. So first things first, we're gonna cut enough in, in this area to make sure that we can splice and do our soldering. So what I'm actually gonna do is, where this splice was in the front, I'm cutting this out. It looks like there was, I don't know, this this insulation is, is cracked like it overheated. I, I don't know, I, I doubt it being the ground side, but we're not taking any chances. So go ahead cut that individual ground pieces out and then I'm going to pull those into this area right here. So you can find these individual grounds and pull them until we get them into this area. Again, that was, they're all going to the exact same place. There was no reason in my mind to have three individual wires going to the same place. So as you can tell, all three of them right here, two of them are going over and tying into this 
60 pin side. They were going over to this splice here. Um, we're gonna, let's leave those for now. And when we splice splice, we'll know, we'll take one of those out. So that is our last bit of wire that we're gonna remove out of here. And we'll be ready on the next go around to make our ground splice here. We're gonna clean this splice up by removing these little tags and making that power connection splice. We're gonna splice in all four of the relays that we need to. And then we'll be ready to do a couple battery checks to make sure that our power uh, comes on when we need it to with the relays. And we'll be one step closer. So leave a comment. Let us know if we're doing good, doing bad. If we can do better, we'll definitely try.